Hello everyone, welcome to the Java Design Pattern course. So in this course, we are going to deep dive into the world of design patterns, one of the most fundamental concepts every Java developer should master. The design pattern provides uh, proven solutions for occurring problems in a software design, helping you to write more robust, maintainable and scalable code. We'll be covering a wide range of patterns that fall into the three main categories, that is creational patterns, structural patterns and behavioral patterns. The creational patterns, this deal with the object creation, ensuring the flexibility and control over the process. You will learn this pattern like singleton factory and builder. The next one is the structural. This helps you to define the relations between the objects in a way that makes your code easier to understand and work with. Some of the patterns have include adapter, composite and decorator. Behavior pattern, this focus on a communication between the objects and responsibility of classes. Pattern like observer, strategy and command will be explored over there. This course is packed with a real-world example, coding demonstration, and the best practice to help you integrate this pattern into your Java project efficiently. By the end of the course, you will not only understand what design patterns are and when to use them, but also gain the ability to write a cleaner, more optimized code that adheres to the solid design pattern principles. So whether you are a beginner looking to build a strong foundation or an experienced developer looking to enhance your skills, this course will give you the tool and knowledge to become the more effective Java programmer. So let's get started and take your coding skill to the next level with the Java program design patterns. In this section, we'll talk about creational design pattern and its examples. So in this section, we are going to explore a set of patterns focused on one of the most important aspects of software design, that is object creation. As an application goes, complexity managing how objects instantiated become crucial for writing clean, efficient, and flexible code. Creational design pattern provide a various techniques to control the creation of the objects in a way that ensures the system remains decoupled, more flexible, and easier to extend. They help you avoid a common problem such as unnecessary object creation, tight coupling, or violating a single responsive principle. Some of the key patterns we'll cover include, as shown in the slide, the first one is a singleton that ensures the class has only one in only one instance. The second one is a factory pattern that provides the interface for creating an object but allows the subclasses to alter the type of the objects. The third one is an abstract factory pattern. A step further than the factory pattern, this pattern you use to create a family of related or dependent object without specifying their concrete class. The fourth one is a builder pattern that focuses on constructing a complex project step by step. And the fifth one is a prototype pattern. This pattern allows for creation of a new object by copying or cloning existing ones. So let's start with the singleton pattern. Now let's see the first ever creational design pattern. This is the most important design pattern also been used to ask uh, in the interview questions, especially in Java. So singleton design pattern is a creational design pattern that ensures a class has only one instance and provide a global point of access in that instance. It is used uh, when the single instance of the class is needed throughout the application such as a logging, caching or the database connection. So the basic two points to remember, the single instance, that is a class ensures that only one instance of itself is created and the another one is a global access. That is, uh, the instance is globally accessible through the static method. Then let's see the implementation in Java. So singleton pattern can be implemented in several ways. So basically is uh, the two ways that is eager initialization and the lazy initialization. In case of a eager initialization, the instance is created at the time of class loading. And in case of lazy initialization, the instance is created when it is needed like uh, when the get instance method is called for the first time. So let's see the example of both in the next. Now let us create a simple um, singleton class which is uh, early loading. So it's a very simple again. I just uh, have a package and I would say early loading and I'll create a class called singleton and in, a, in case of early loading, uh, what we need to do is uh, simply uh, or I would say eager initialization. The instance is created at the time of the class loading. So um, I will simply say private static final singleton and instance and equal to new singleton. 
and then simply I we should have a private constructor um, to avoid the client application to use the constructor so so that nobody can um, create a new singleton using the constructor so private singleton and this is so simple again now global access uh, point to get the instance and that would be the static method and this is a very simple again okay so public static single get the instance and return the instance okay now let us simply write a test cases for the same so I just right click and um, or here you can say right click generate and click on the test and singleton test and then we would have this one over here so it is complaining about the library because we may not have the JUnit library so what I will do with dependency and, um, and JUnit simply I would say JUnit library And rather I am looking for this one. Okay, and here I can check the latest version 5.10.3. Okay. And then I required a Jupyter engine. So, and again I'll just check for the latest version 10.3. And both have the scope as a test. Okay. Alright. So first uh, test case would be, I would say, test, and that would be, okay, let me check the Maven, refresh, yeah, test, yeah, so public void test singleton instance. and let's get two instance sing instance one and instance two and then um assert that the two instances are the same and we can have the message as well um, the two instances are uh, same should be the same okay in case if it is failed this should be the message so now let us run it either we can write and run either we can run as a class level which you know, run all the test cases and if you want an individual test case to be run click over here and run it looks pretty okay now um, we should also check whether the instance itself is not null Okay. Uh, yeah. That in singleton is not done. Okay. Again, let's run it, and it's not null. We also need to check that the constructor uh, is private. So what I will do is simply um, test and public void test private constructor. Okay, and throws no such um, method exception. Okay. And here, uh, attempt to get the constructor and assert that it is private. Okay. Constructor singleton. Let's see. Okay. And ensure that the constructor is private 
it's private is not method is accessible if it is uh, public then it is accessible um though it is showing and deprecated so let's try to run equal to false now we should run yeah so if it is true then it is accessible and it is pr uh, public so we have checked whether it is a private constructor yeah. and then we also check that it is not null and we also check whether the both the singleton instance are same okay all right so that's it for the eager initialization next we'll see the lazy initialization now let us see the example of uh, lazy initialization. So what I will do, I will simply create another package and instead of early, I would say lazy and I will create another um, class also name is a singleton okay. and here I simply uh, say private um, static singleton an instance just simply say this and I will say a private constructor which will be the same okay and in the third case a uh, public static um, singleton and get instance and then we will check whether instance is null then it will create a new singleton otherwise it will return the singleton which has been already created the benefit over here is that if you are not creating any sort of uh, object of the singleton then it will not be created at all it will only be created when the first time this object is created uh, like in unlike in the early case where irrespective of whether you are creating or using the singleton it will be created uh, at the start of singleton well in the uh, very small case it should be okay but if it is a very complex object and a heavy object that it will already uh, unnecessary use memory until it will be called the first time all right so this will be a very good case in case of a lazy initialization now let us write a test cases for the singleton test that is uh, for a lazy initialization so here what i will do is i will simply um, write the package and the package would be or g design pattern creational singleton and lazy okay and here i will write a class singleton test okay and then um i'll write the first test um test a uh, public void test singleton instance um say first let's check the not null because that is what our first criteria should be there. okay so here we are checking the test singleton instance not null and we'll check assert null. okay and let's check it first all right now let's test another for okay check for same instance asset same And here we are just taking the two instances and we check if they are not same then this message would be produced 
So let's see. Same. And um, let's check for the pilot constructor. We already test. Check that previously. This should look the same. Let's import this method. Now, um, because we are using the lazy initialization, so there are chances that um, multiple thread try to enter into this uh, singleton in this block here. So if the two threads come simultaneously, there are chances that they will, they both will find the null and they will create the singleton. So we'll just first try the two threads in fact. Check for multiple th threads. Okay. This is thread one. Thread 2, thread 1 start and thread 2 start. Okay. Now let's check it and running. Okay, so now let's run all the methods and I will show you what exactly the problem is. Though all the methods are running because uh, if you see these two threads, if we go into the console, and here we need to print the hash code and if we try to run again we find the two hash codes same but this is not the case every time there are chances that this thread uh, two threads have uh, got the same singleton so we'll try to break this uh, singleton um, by creating another class here in the temp and I just give the name as um, singleton break and here I will write a code and first of all I'll write the main method and um, create uh, an array of 20 threads okay so we have 20 threads uh, let's, let's write and what i will do is simply initialize uh, all the threads and print the hash code okay here let's have lazy one okay just print a message okay and then after I will start all the threads at the same time. Okay, so here first we create array of threads and then we um, call each uh, threads and we create a new threads and we are printing the singleton hash code and then we start all the threads. Okay, and then uh, we want uh, all the threads to join at the end. Of the methods okay so here the code for joining all the th threads so that uh, our program does not get exit okay all right so now let me run this uh, program and let's see in, uh, in the first case, we found all the threads has the same hash code. Let's try again. Again, yes, same. Okay, in the third attempt, we found a one thread has a different hash code. And the another also thread is there, which has a different hash code, even though thread, uh, our class is a singleton. So this is the way that we violate 
the singleton uh, class or singleton object or it's a total violation of the singleton design pattern over here now what we can do to uh, solve this thing so what we can do here is we put um, a static synchronized synchronize okay now if you try this again then let's see all good let's try again all good let's try again we'll try five times or maybe any time any number of times we'll get the same single done all good and now let's try one more time and we get the same one all right in this way we can uh, violate uh, we can uh, help or avoid violating any sort of um, a single turn so this is now a thread step but now there is one problem this will uh, synchronize the whole method say for example we have lots of things over here apart from creating the single turn and uh, even afterward but it will block the whole um, method rather than but we are interested in only blocking this one so what we can do and there comes the picture of double check locking that is a thread step and the performance efficient so this is not a performance efficient that we'll have to write another code or modify this code so that it can be um, performance oriented or that approach minimize the overhead of synchronized block by checking the instance twice so we'll remove this uh, synchronized part and I will replace this thing if instance is null not null again this can be a multiple thread comes and then only we do a synchronize okay so this is automatically double check and here can put over here Now let's check the singleton break. We'll try again five times. Same. Let's check again. Same. Third time. Fourth time. And one more time. Every time we get the same singleton, but it is more efficient than the previous one, which synchronized the whole method. All right? there is another way we can break the singleton if your singleton implements the clone one so what i would say i simply create another package called clone and here i will um, just paste the code okay and here is the singleton is just only the same singleton which here we are implementing the clonable and we are just overriding the clone method where the clone method throws a clone not support and it will call the super clone so now how can i um break this singleton what i will do i simply here if in the temp file this is the clone test and let's okay and the protected access okay and if I now run this uh, method or class in the main method, then we find that the instance hash code and instance 2 hash code are different. So by this way, we already violated the cloning one. So what we can do here is instead of this uh, throwing um, super uh, calling the return super dot clone, what we can do is throw a clone not supported exception. and you can see that cannot clone singleton object now let us try and we got an exception so the hash code either hash code would be the same or you will get if you are trying by mistake or by intent if you are trying to clone it you will get a clone not supported exception so we have prevented another violation of the singleton pattern by using the clone node supported exception. One more way we can violate the singleton using the serialization. 
if your singleton is implementing the serialization then we can violate the same thing so here um, our singleton instance is there and singleton's class is there and which implement the serializable interface and here we are just simply writing the uh, the old code and i simply write this uh, simple code over here again it's very simple so don't worry about i'm not typing the code so here if you see the singleton obviously we are getting the singleton and printing the hash code now we are serializing the single instance as object output stream and then um, using the output stream file output stream just we are putting this uh, object into the singleton.ser then again we are using the object input stream we are deserializing the singleton and we are just reading the um, we are uh, getting the object using the read object the back singleton instance so because of the singleton we are expecting this uh, two instance hash code should be the same all right so let's see and we have a different hash code right now to make sure uh, that uh, our code works fine and we do not want another simple uh, another instance then what we can do here is a simple mechanism is that um, protected object read resolve method you just need to implement and return the same instance and now if we try again then we have the same hash code if you try again again the same hash code all right so that's where uh, we can um, avoid breaking the singleton using the simulation there is another way where you can um, violate the singleton or break the singleton using the reflection so what i will do is simply create um, refle reflection class over here singleton reflection break and here what i will do is simply write a main method and um try uh, okay. not this one Uh, so first of all let the, let me get the singleton first of all and then i simply use the exception only okay and print the hash code and break the singleton using the reflection now constructor so now we first let get the constructor using the singleton dot dot class dot get declared constructor and then constructor uh, dot set accessible okay, let me set accessible equal to true so this will uh, make your um, make your constructor as uh, from private to public right and now let create a singleton instance too and now let's print the hash code now what we can do is let's run this and you can see the two different hash code so we are able to create a two different um, instance of the singleton class thereby we are violating or breaking the singleton itself so now what we can do we can go to this uh, singleton class here we can simply uh, put a flag and we can create a simple private static boolean instance created and if it is instance is created, we can just put a condition here and uh, we can simply instance created equal to now true now let's try here what we are doing in fact if the instance is created if this constructor has already been passed then we'll make it true so even though if somebody is trying to make it public by using the reflection then only will not be able to get success so what i will do is simply um, try again 
you can see the instance is already created in reflection invocation target exception that occurred so now nobody will try to um, violate this uh, singleton using the reflection now the better solution would be the enum make your singleton class enum if you are not going with the class because uh, enum does guarantee a single instance in the jvm they are also protected against the reflection and the serialization attack they provide a built-in thread safety they are simple concise and reducing the boilerplate code so for most cases using the enum to implement the singleton is considered to be a more reliable and easiest method so we found all the different ways how we can create the singleton by lazy early using the clone serializable and we also seen the different ways where we can violate this uh, singleton design pattern using the again clone multiple threads or uh, serialization or reflection and we also tried to resolve how we can write rewrite the code so that it is uh, a perfect or you can say a near to perfect uh, singleton class all right so that's it for this video thanks for watching see you in the next video